Welcome to another edition of the Grace Hour here in Baltimore, Maryland from our studios. We're excited to be with you this afternoon. Uh, we have a great program. We're thinking a lot this week about courage. We had the theme last week on taking courage for our convention. Our convention is over, but our mission continues. We'll, have, we'll begin with an open devotional from Pastor Chevelli here in the studio, and then we'll open the phone lines. We'd love to hear from you. Please call us at 1-800-338-7060, or locally you can call us at 410-483-3700. Also, we'd love to see you. You can see us actually on our podcast at Circle. You can see us on Apple. You can see us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Audible, and Stitcher, just to name a few. But again, we'd love to hear from you. Please call in, or you can watch us also on YouTube and Facebook and Gracebook, gracehour.org live. You can see us there. But let's begin the program with a stirring devotional by Pastor Stephen Chevelli. Okay, if you would turn and read this for me. Sure. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and 2. Okay, that's, that's where we would begin. We're going to talk about the way of the mighty men. Beautiful. Isn't that right? Isaiah the chapter 66. The way of the mighty men. The way of the mighty men. Isaiah 66. Verses 1 and 2. Okay, so if you're listening and following along, and I know you are, let's go to the Word of God together and turn to chapter 66 of Isaiah, the last chapter. And Isaiah says in chapter 66, verse 1, Thus says the Lord, The heaven is, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house? that you build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? And in verse 2, Isaiah says this, For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, says the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembles at my word. Great portion of Scripture. And uh, Isaiah the prophet is saying that God is looking for a place to rest. And where God rests, that's where he can build his house. So often we think about it in Christianity, and it's absolutely true. Uh, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. But what about God resting? What about God resting? On the seventh day he rested. Okay, after he, six days of creation. What about a place where God will rest? God is looking for a resting place. Isn't that interesting? This is what Isaiah 66, and we're going to relate this to the mighty men in just a moment. But he's looking for a place of rest, and he says, this is a certain man I'm going to look for. Mm -hmm. The word look means to seek, to seek. And I love it how the Father seeks, John 4, 20 through 24, uh, he, he seeks. The Son seeks, Luke 19, 10, and the Spirit seeks, Acts chapter 8. Beautiful. So the Trinity is always seeking. And seeking always means not just kind of out there roaming around, wandering around, but having a purpose and a desire uh, and a plan and having an objective to that plan. So the seeking Trinity, the seeking Father, the seeking Son, the seeking Holy Spirit. So he said, this is the man to, to whom I will look. And it means God is seeking a particular kind of a man or a, a church, uh, an application, a man, a woman, a person that he can rest in. Because where he can rest is where he can build. If he's not resting, he's not building. By the way, if God is not resting in me, he's resisting me. It's either it's one hour or the other. It's either rest in me or resist me. And he says three qualities of a man, and then you can apply it to a church or even to Israel. He said, this is the man to whom I will look. Number one, he that's poor. That's the word ani, A-N-I, or A-N-A-W in the Hebrew language. He's poor, and it means he's meek. The actual word translate meekness. Remember Numbers 12, verses 1 and 2, Moses was the meekest man in all the earth. He's meek. What does it mean to be meek? Jesus says, I am meek and lowly, Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30, and you'll find rest for your soul. What does it mean to be meek? God's looking for a man, a church, a ministry that's meek. They do, not, they do not react against God. They do not rebel against his will. Mm -hmm. They are people who are receiving from his word. So he says, I can rest in this type of a man, a man who's meek. Then he says he's contrite in spirit. We can uh, kind of attach to that. It means he's humble. Mm -hmm. There's humility, humility. 
that God is looking for not only meek people, but humble people. People are humble. Meek is always towards the word, and humble is always towards grace. I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, meek and humble, all right? Meek and humble, meek and contrite, a contrite spirit. Then the third quality of the man he's looking for is one who trembles at his word. Now, what does that mean? He's like shaking or he's afraid or what? No, it means one who places great honor and value in the word of God. Great honor and great value. So God is looking for this kind of a person. He says he's the only person I can rest in. This kind of a ministry, God can rest in. If God is not resting, then God is resisting. Mm -hmm. So David found, or they found him, David found them, they found him. David found some men. In 1 Samuel chapter 20 through 22, David was on the run from Saul. Mm -hmm. After killing Goliath in 1 Samuel 17 and having Jonathan as his friend, all of a sudden, King Saul, through jealousy and envy, began to see David as a threat to his kingdom. And he started to, uh, a movement to actually chase him for a number of years. And so David was on the run. And he ended up in a place called the Cave Agilum. Mm -hmm. The Cave Agilum is an interesting word, uh, that definition. First Samuel, Cave Agilum, chapter 22. Second Samuel 23, back at the Cave Agilum 40-something years later. Wow. What does the word Agilum mean? The place of God's delight. So the cave ministry was a place of God's delight. And there, some men found him. First of all, it was 400. Then they became another 200. They became his mighty men, or the 600. And they were broken down, certainly into uh, the first three, uh, the three uh, mighty captains, uh, then the, the second three, and then there was another uh, 30 or so plus, mm -hmm. not including Joab. But these mighty men, these men, and it's really amazing because these men were with David for decades. Mm. They weren't like just, you know, come by lately guys. Mm -hmm. They weren't men that would uh, come by and, and, and be with him for like a month, a year, two years, three years, five years. But they say it lasted something like 40 to 45 years. Mm -hmm. They were with him. They were the mighty men. They were on his right and on his left. Mm -hmm. And really, you can see this also in the New Testament principle where Jesus had 11 men. And they were with him. And Paul had 10 in Acts chapter 20, verse 4. He had 10 men moving with him. You can see Gideon with his 300. Yes. You, can, you can see this principle. You can see Abraham with his 318 in the book of Genesis. So these were mighty men. They were called mighty men. And uh, one time, uh, Athithophel told David that uh, if you meet your father with your army, and his army was over 100,000, if you meet your father with the 600 mighty men in battle, you lose. Mm. You're going to lose. Because those mighty men have valiant hearts and mm -hmm. chafed minds. <laughs> and men, when they got their mind on something, they were going to do it. Wow. Then it, it don't get in the way either. That's good. One guy could take out 300 people by himself. Mm. You know, mm. His hand claved to his sword. So these were the mighty men of David. And these were men that were, became disciples. But here's some characteristics of the mighty men. Okay, and these were men that were number one, receiving from God, mm -hmm. number two, honoring Israel, and number three, honoring David, the leader. See, this is this is the interesting point. It wasn't just David alone, mm -hmm. because if David moved away from God, they shouldn't honor him. Mm -hmm. All right, this is very important. David moved away from Israel, they shouldn't honor him, and if Israel moved away from God, so they honored God Himself, mm -hmm. Yahweh. They honored the nation of Israel as God's chosen people. And then they honored David as the one who was leading them as their leader. And this is very, very important. So number one, these men were faithful and loyal. These were loyal men and these were faithful men. And they didn't matter what people's opinion of David was. It didn't matter what David did per se, maybe they would, could disagree with maybe a certain way he was being led or a direction he was going in or decisions he was making. They were men who were loyal and faithful to David, loyalty and faithful to, to David. Number two, they were men who had a purpose. They were men who had a purpose. Purpose is actually the word in the New Testament, uh, protithemi, where you've been placed. They were not just men who were faithful and loyal. And that's one point. Faithful and loyal is the same thing. 
in some aspects. But they were men of purpose. <clears throat> men of purpose. Number three, they were men who could stand and walk together. They could be together, you know. They were not they were not loners. They they're together. You know how many people don't think they need a church. Yes. They're gonna just walk with God and, and that's it. And they don't need a church really. Well, Jesus was the head, he needed the body. That's kind of interesting to me how people think it's not important to come to church. Mm -hmm. Wow. So they were men of faithfulness and loyalty. They were men who had a purpose, which was eternal. They were men who could stand together. And then number uh, four, they were men who could walk alone. Hmm. They, they could be alone. They had a, a personal walk with God. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one, one person could be isolated and, and he would make it because mm -hmm. they were men that could walk alone. And that's why they were mighty. That's why they had strong courage. It wasn't just because they had some kind of courage in them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, through the spirit, of course, but they had faithfulness and loyalty. They had purpose. They could walk together and they could walk alone. And this was a key. This is why they were called mighty men. And year after year, day after day, year after year, he would do something like this extreme. I need some water from the well of Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And they would break through one army and then break through the second army around Bethlehem, get the water, and have to break back through again, mm -hmm. one army, and back through to another army. So they have to go through, they have to fight their way through four armies to bring water, and then he pours it out. Mm -hmm. He said, this is amazing. You know, these, these were men. Mm -hmm. And maybe they, they didn't sit back and try to figure out why he would do that. Mm -hmm. They just trusted him. There was a great trust in David as their captain and as the person that was over him. This is why, and I, I really believe this, the reason why we see so little effect taking place in some places uh, in Christianity is because there's lacking these kind of people, these kind of mighty men, these kind of men of courage, these kind of, these kind of men and women who will take a stand with God. So many people today and so many churches today have one foot in God and one foot in the world. Mm -hmm. And like a chicken, you ever take a chicken and you pull, you get both legs and you break it up the middle? Yeah, yeah, you have to do that. Sometimes in Africa you have to do that. You just break the chicken up the middle. And you can't live in both places at the same time. It becomes impossible. Jesus said, listen, you're lukewarm. I wish you were either hot or you were cold, yeah. but I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. The mighty men were not lukewarm. They were on fire for God. So as we consider this today, the way of the mighty men, it was a way of faithfulness, a way of loyalty, a way of purpose, a way that put them together with other men of God and their captain. And, and it was a way where if they had to walk alone, they could walk alone. These are the mighty men, and they were something else. They were to be reckoned with. Yep. In Jesus' name, Amen. we thank you for our time today and whatever program we're on, and we... <laughs> believe you today <laughs> and for all the all the media and everything that goes out everywhere thank you for this day bless our time in jesus name amen amen thank you awesome words from pastor shabelli on the mighty men and the spirit of a, of god's man in isaiah 66 we'd love to hear from you we'd love to hear your comments your your, your questions here at grace hour on 1-800-338-7060 or you can also call us locally at 410 Four eight three thirty seven hundred, 3700 And again, you can also reach out to us through Grace Hour, YouTube, Live, and Facebook with your comments. Uh, it'd be great to hear from you. Um, let me ask yeah, a, a yeah. question, Pastor Billy. Um, these characteristics that you find in the mighty men, uh, even though they were men, these are also sure. found yeah. in mighty women. And Absolutely. You could actually say that. Absolutely. Maybe they Abigail. Were, yeah. There were plenty a Ruth, of them. beautiful. A Rahab. But without they, a doubt. Mary. Yes. I mean, Mary, she's yeah. pregnant without being married. Yeah. Yeah. You found them there. You found them there in, uh, in Priscilla. Because yeah. the world looks at the mighty men and there's an emphasis on the, the emphasis on mighty. You think about a demonstration of behavior. He yeah. did this. He did that. But what you brought out very nicely is you brought out that it was more a measurement of character, character. and not a measure of behavior. Yeah. And that's why it's for women and for men, this, this character. And let me ask you this question. Why do you think in today's church we don't have these mighty men and mighty women of character? Well, I think maybe people desire a superficial type of Christianity that has some outward resemblance 
to the life of Christ and the early church, mm. but inwardly is it there? Because it's when it's when there's the Holy Spirit operating. So you know, is a is a church or a uh, a man or a woman spirit filled? Mm. And are they not only spirit filled? That's Ephesians five eighteen. But they are they in Colossians three sixteen? Word of God filled. Okay. Word of God filled and spirit filled. Then character is developed. Character doesn't happen overnight. You get saved in one second. Okay, somebody once said, I think it was Spurgeon, that salvation is the miracle of a moment. Discipleship is a lifetime. Hmm. It's a lifetime. It takes time. It's not, it doesn't happen in like, you know, some people like to create these like, you know, quick disciples, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In three months, you went to Bible school for three months and now you're a disciple. You know what? Devil will swallow you alive. You know, Mm. It's, it's long term. It's like, it's like growing in the grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Some of these people in the Bible, we don't really understand at times time periods. It took years. It took decades. That's big. It took decades. And some people think they're supposed to have, uh, they read about it in the Bible and they exactly. think it's going to happen tomorrow. Yes. And no. I read you the can story make a decision. and I'm Ben and I, right? Oh, I read the story and I'm, I'm, I'm on a yeah. hill with the sword. And you come to church, Pastor Bill. You come to church and you hear the story of these amazing guys and you think, I want to be like that. So number one, I have to do what they do, yeah. and I have to do it tomorrow. We talked about this yesterday on Grace Hour about how there is this resisting the resistance that you develop spiritual muscles through spiritual exercise. It's yes. this process. Mm. Pastor's great booklet, um, Crisis to Process, right? You're developing. There is this process of, of and really isn't that what sanctification is? Yeah. Isn't that really the process of the develop, of my character? I mean, how, how many years did it take? for Timothy and Titus to be developed as leaders many years. That doesn't happen overnight. Mm, it doesn't mm. happen overnight. People think if they go to Bible school, all of a sudden, like their, their character is developed to a, in a place where they're now a leader. Like try another 10 years of experience. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's amazing. It's kind of like, uh, how long does a person get involved with playing a sport and then would go to the major leagues? Mm. You're talking, it, it could be 20 years, 25 years. You know, you get a kid that's five years old, you put a baseball bat in his hand yeah. and a baseball and you throw the ball in him and whatnot. And it's going to be years mm. of developing mm. him as an athlete in a sport. But yet they, people think with Christianity, I, I got saved last night. Mm-hmm. And like today, I'm going to be Benaiah. You know? <laughs> and, and I'm going to and I'm going to be the Apostle Paul. And I'm going to be the. They want the quick fix. You know what it's like? Mm-hmm. It's like, do you want to go to a place and press a button and a hamburger comes out? Or do I want my wife to make sauce for two or three days with meatballs and pork chops in it, okay? Oh. Or am I gonna get one of these flim flam sauces at one of these flim out of a flam jar. operations in a jar, <laughs> you know, a ragu or something, there it is. and call it the same thing? It's very different. You can't say one, Thai without saying I ragu. Would see my, I would see my mother, she would start on Friday night and you'd eat on Sunday. Wow. No, it was that. And so that's the same thing with character. I get you. These mighty men, this took years and years of being with this man of God. This is key. With, what's interesting is that, because in today's church, there's a big push for content. Yeah. Like if that guy goes to school, if that guy's got content, and even people run to the internet to go grab content. But one thing you can't download is character. No, you can't download character. You can't, you can't manufacture that. I like the way you said it's a process. So when I read about these mighty men, and even maybe, let's just say I'm a gap guy. Maybe just say I'm not a guy that fits in all the, the boxes. I'm not the guy that's getting all the attention. I'm not the guy. Maybe God is building something in me that, that's yeah. not so seen. How about these people? Like They go out and they've had very little training. Then they go out in the mission field, and they do their three-month touristic mission somewhere yeah. and all of a sudden they think they're like the missionary galore you know this is who i am and here's the interesting thing about character yep hebrews eleven six. without faith mm-hmm. it's impossible to please god mm. so here's the character of god right and you, you mix faith with it and you live it day by day mm. moment by moment mm. this these things don't happen and the maturity of a of a believer takes years decades mm. but people think I'm saved, I'm born again, I go to church, and all of a sudden I can do the things that are there. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're absolutely possible with the, the Holy Spirit, with God. But God is going to mature people. It's going to take time. Abraham was, I think, 13 years between Genesis 16 and 17 wow. when God said nothing to him mm-hmm. because he went a certain direction. Mm-hmm. His character wasn't exactly correct. 
So he went in another direction. God took 40, Moses, excuse me, this is how we're going to deliver the children of Israel, not by killing an Egyptian and hiding him in the sand. You're going to come with me for 40 years on the backside of the Sinai right. wilderness, and we're going to teach you a few things. Wow. I'm going to show you something. So now I'll send you back 40 years of training. Wow. Oh, come on. I don't want to do that. And what was the 40 years of training? It wasn't he, he didn't become a better swordsman. He didn't no. become a better communicator. But what God did in 40 years was character. Yeah, he built his character. Wow. Character is the key. And so uh, many times people think because they have the information okay. that the information is not character. Mm. There's got to be a starting point right. when I receive God's thoughts, God's purpose, and God's knowledge. And mm. that begins mm. to be developed in my life. I receive it in. But then I mix faith with that. And, and, and that's what takes place. So the, the character, this is so key. So these mighty men mm -hmm. uh, were developed over a course of many years. And it says they were with them maybe 45 years. And so maybe we see in Second Samuel right. we like that part. Yeah, yeah, that's you know? the, that's the glory well, part. What about the First Samuel? <laughs> what about First Samuel uh, when they go to the cave? I wonder what they're getting in the cave. You know, I wonder who they were before they met him because hmm. they're in the cave with the wife and the kids. It's four hundred. They're in a cave and they're living in a cave, and we yeah. don't know anything about the quality of, of of who they are. But they meet David. David walks in, and there's something about David that makes four hundred men take their families and follow him for yeah. the rest of his life. And I think that's key. You know, one of, the, one of my favorites in all of these mighty men is Benaiah. Okay. And uh, his name means son of my right hand. Mm. That's what his name means. And by the way, do you know that eventually, you, probably, you know this, but yeah. he became not only the head of the inside army, yeah. but the head of the outside army. Yeah. He was over both of them, inside troops, yeah. which were there to protect David. Mm -hmm. And they were like his inside men, you know? Mm. And then there was the outside uh, men, the host in which they, they did all the fighting. But he, he was key. He was key after Joab kind of went the, the, another way. Yeah. Uh, here comes Benaiah. And Benaiah was a, a mighty man of valor. I like how he jumped into a pit on a snowy day and killed the lion. Why couldn't he just walk by that pit and leave that lion inside the pit on a snowy day? Because he knows that lion's going to come out one day. Mm -hmm. It's going to be some problem. So let me go. Let me jump in a pit and kill the lion. Right? Then he, he killed two uh, lion-like men of Moab, mm -hmm. okay? That lion-like men of Moab means the devil and the flesh. Mm -hmm. These guys, he, he just took care of them mm -hmm. real quick. Then he killed an Egyptian with his own spear. In other words, the Egyptian comes at him with a spear, pulls the spear out of his hand and kills him with his own spear. I think that guy had courage. Bishop, <laughs> let me ask this question. So I'm listening to the program today. I'm asking myself this question. I want to be a mighty man <laughs> or a mighty woman. Where does yeah. that start? How did that begin? Well, it starts, number one, with being born again. Okay. okay, getting saved. Number two, finding yourself a good local church that can train you, okay. that can develop your spiritual life. Number three, Bible college, going mm. to church, being going to a church that has a Bible college or going to a Bible college where I am through a number of years, not three months, not one month, three months, six months, but over the course of years, I am going to be developed in a Bible college. I'm going to be trained. Mm -hmm. Do you go, if, if you walk into the doctor and he says, glad to have you here. I happen to be doing a, a, a heart transplant on you. You say, wow, where'd you go to school? He goes, I never went. <laughs> I never went to school. I never, I never went to medical school. Or you go to the dentist. He said, this, this is my first case. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've been uh, two months a dentist. You know what? I'm getting out of there real quick. Okay. And so this is what happens. People think just because they're born again, right. they have the potential with the Holy Spirit living in them, but it takes character development over many years. How about uh, like Sebastian, did you learn to be a father the first day your child was born? It takes years. Yes to grow in being a father. I'm still figuring that out, okay? <laughs> and I've been a, a father for 45 years, you know? But that, it takes time. Yeah. And see, people don't want to pay any price. They just want to hand it to the, hand, just hand it to me. Uh, you gave it to me. Everything's all <laughs> set, and here we go. And may, you know? maybe, this, maybe this has to happen. Maybe I have to come to the end of myself and realize yeah. I can't do this. That This is not a do-it-yourself Right. This situation, I can't make myself a mighty man. Yes. But I've got to come to and a mighty God. So what do we say? Salvation? Yep. Finding a good church, mm -hmm. getting trained in the Bible school, and then being discipled. See, David discipled them. Okay? Having a pastor that's, or, or somebody's going to disciple you in the church. I used to meet every Wednesday. I'm going to take it up again when I'm not traveling as much, I would meet every Wednesday night for like one hour to an hour and a half with seven to 10 men. 
and just spend time with them, pray with them, uh, talk, have something for them. Not just, okay, there's church, and that's awesome, and mm -hmm. that's the key. But then there's also a time when I am spend, spending with people. Every time I would travel in places in Africa, if I was going on a 24-hour journey, i take 8, 10 minutes with, mm -hmm. with me. I'm doing that uh, this year when I go to Togo, mm -hmm. when I go to Bogotanga in the Sahara Desert, when I go to Burkina Faso, I'm always taking 8 to 10 minutes with me. We stay together for like 7 days. Eat mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. We stay in a, in a wonderful hotels together <laughs> and we travel in the van together yes. and we we you know everything it's like seven days with like 10 guys and by the way that's discipleship let me ask you a question on that that's one that, that, that's a big one because right now globally in the christian church that's not really happening no it's, it, it's, it's both ways number one it's not happening because leadership is not putting the time into it and number two, it's not happening because a lot of folks don't want that. They, they don't, don't want. want it. They don't want to be. Disciples. They just want. They want. The, they want the, uh, surface Christianity. Like think about this: seven point two to three billion people on planet Earth, and they say maybe seven hundred million Christians. Okay. Okay. Why is it that, like, India is being overrun by Hindu, Hindu religion? Why is it that Africa, which used to be Ten percent of a certain religion is now forty percent. Mm -hmm. You see, because you have people that are saved, but they're not disciples. You have men and women that are saved; they're born again. They're going to heaven. There's no doubt about it. But they're not disciples. They're not soldiers. Huh. I mean, me remember what Paul said to Timothy? Yeah. He said, "Be a good soldier." Wow. Be a good soldier. What does a soldier do? Yeah. Sit back on a lounge chair and sip uh, lemonade at a pool his whole life? Stay with that for a second. Okay. <laughs> I'm a Christian. I want to be discipled. Um, from my side, what does that look like? Because I realize character is not going to happen on my own. So right. how do I get there? Oh, I find a man of God who can disciple me. Or if I'm a woman, I find a woman of God who's mature that can disciple me, that can spend time with me. Discipleship, the word actually means to be one who's a learning, mm. a learning one. Okay, mathetes is the word, mathetio uh, is the word. There's different words used for discipleship. But I'm going to put myself with somebody, mm -hmm. and I'm going to hang on to them, and I don't even care if it's uncomfortable for them or me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just, I'm going to do this. Where they are, I'm going. Well, that's big. Yeah. What you just said, yeah. if it's uncomfortable for them or it's uncomfortable for me, th yeah. because there's purpose. Yeah. Because could we say this? Could we say the mighty men weren't mighty till they met David? Could Absolutely. Could we say that? That's they may have they, they had the, they had the possibilities okay. and the character trait leaning a certain way, but they had to find if it wasn't for David. That's amazing. You know, without David, where where do they go? And I'm not saying that you know David or uh, some leader. By the way, go to a church where you're getting discipled. Some people go to churches and they're ten years later they're no different than they were ten years ago. Well, Nothing it, has changed. Well, it seems like the Nothing's goal changed. now, the goal for a quarter century was membership. <laughs> that I'm just going to belong to a church, yeah. right? I'm going to be a member of the church. And then on my own, I kind of get on the internet and kind of d disciple myself through information, yeah. content, but I can't develop my own character. It's a self-orientated uh, Christianity now. Wow. See, the, the, the world that elevates self mm -hmm. and being alone and just doing your own thing has now, that culture has worked its way into Christianity. Wow. Christianity has not put up any fight against it, you mm -hmm. know? What I'm saying, why is it? Why is it that with so many Christians in 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 this country, we have so many people that are, say mm -hmm. they're born again. Yeah. Okay, in this country, what what is what's how come all these evils are taking place everywhere? I'm not going to go through naming all of them. Sure. You know, uh, drinking, yep. drugs, yep. abortion. Why? Because it's not discipleship Christianity. It's surface Christianity. I'm born again. I mm -hmm. go to church. Don't bother me. Well, wow. I'm not interested in doing anything about the social ills of the day. And right. I'm not interested in evangelism. I asked somebody today in India, I said, do you know any churches in the city that you're in, which has 30 million people? Do you meet any churches on evangelism? They said, not really. Can you imagine? I mean, a church that doesn't care about reaching the loss with the gospel. What effect does that have? Let's, let's take this. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a Is call. Is anybody there? 1-800-338-7060. Uh, call us locally at 410-483-3700. We'd love to hear from you again. Send your questions and comments as Jonathan just did. We'd love to hear you on this topic. As we're talking about the mighty people or the mighty men, we're mentioning that the, the reason why they went from 400 men in a cave 
into the mighty men was there was someone in their life who discipled yeah. character in them. I'd love to hear your thoughts about discipleship. It's a hot topic. Our bookstores are empty with books on discipleship. <laughs> They're full of books on praise and nothing on discipleship. And praise glorifies God, but discipleship builds churches. Call us. We want to hear from you. Uh, Jonathan has a question for us. He says this in his question. Is there work involved in maturing in our walk with God? Is there work involved? And this is what he says. I thought we were works from we were free from works and lived <laughs> in liberty. Please explain. Oh yeah, well, don't use your liberty as a license to sin. In other words, like Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, Jonathan. I am what I am by the grace of God. There's yes. great liberty. And that grace caused me to labor more abundantly than you all. Okay. People that say they're saved and they have no life of doing anything with God, no, there's no there's nothing involved. There's no faith works. There's no grace works. There's no love works. Those people are just like living in some kind of a, a seductive, superficial, right. satanically influenced Christianity. I that's, would also, way, that's all it is. I'd also add this. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 says, you have liberty in Christ. But then it says in the same chapter, chapter verse 13, that your liberty is not an occasion for the flesh. Right. Meaning there's right. your word for work. I think you see work like effort. But when the Bible speaks about work in the life of a Christian, he's speaking about participation. Um, faith is participation um, in my walk. So is there participation in my maturing in my walk with God, Jonathan? The answer is yes, because God does not mature you by force. I got a good one. I'm, Jesus is not coming from heaven to earth. He'll just let you figure. He's God. He's there. But he's not going to come and live the Christian life. Live the life of Christ. He's not going to go to the cross and die. Mm -hmm. He's going to stay there and just maybe have the message be, it, it was in the Bible. Yeah. God didn't have to come. Mm -hmm. He came, you know, and see, usually people that are lazy okay. always want to come back with some idea about, you know, what, like you're talking about oh, some kind of work system. Well, we they, have a lot of lazy Christians today. They I'm might, sorry to say. They might, that you're talking about deism where God's uninvolved in my yeah, life and, right. we're, and we're not deists. But I do want right. to say there are some folks, and maybe Jonathan is this guy, who aren't necessarily lazy, but uninformed about what work is. Because when you look at an English translation of the Bible, you see the word work, 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 and you think, okay, I've been freed from my works. I have been freed from the works of the flesh, and I live in the liberty of the spirit. And that's how I, mm -hmm. I, I operate. Paul said that, 1 Corinthians 15, 10, I labor how? In the spirit. Yep. But you're right. If it's free, if we are free from the works of the flesh. So is right. there work right. in the maturing in the, our walk with God? Yes. Does it is the a new man do anything? That's it. The, like, the man that preached grace. Yes. What, follow his life and acts, Paul. He was Come on. He was, he, he, was, he was involved with preaching, teaching, ministering, traveling, doing all those things. He was involved in a labor of love. Let's take some of these comments from the internet here. We've got um, Ismene talks about that mighty men there are no mighty women is mean as we said we're mighty people in christ um because of character god's character can be in a man yeah. or a woman don't get caught up in the gender selection these things are applicable both you might not kill 800 men um <laughs> you might not be on a hill slaughtering beans that you might not kill a two a, a, you might not jump in a pit but you can have the sure. character of the mighty man and is mean here's the key he hit it really good when he talked about how I'm being discipled in a body of Christ, in a work of God. That character is developed in me. Um, uh, Marion mentions, for instance, De Deborah, the judge. Yeah, um, yeah, she was amazing. I mean, there was these were David's mighty men, mm -hmm. and they they were under assault by King Saul. Mm -hmm. So it was men at the particular time. But look at Abigail was a mighty woman of God. If it wasn't for her, David could have gone another way. Mm -hmm. Deborah, which you just mentioned. Uh, you know, Sarah, Kathy Ryan, Kathy Ryan. Yes. There we go. Yeah. Mighty women of God. I mean, in, in the New Testament, yes. think about it, the woman at the well. Yes. Wins a whole town yep. city to Christ. The woman at the well. I mean, really, there's amazing examples of mighty women of God in the Bible, without a doubt. Carol Rhodes is watching from Brooklyn. The Bible speaks. Hi, Carol. Um, Robert Osaga says, hi, Pastor Billy. Hi, Pastor. Uganda. Aldo. There it is. Um, I don't know who that is watching from break time in a high vac van. Um, <laughs> uh, Robert Osaka says, talks, he says, very true. The church without discipleship is a dead church for sure. God bless you for this much this thought. 
Anthony Sewell says this, and this is a question I'm going to bring to you. Can you be a disciple, an older disciple, or does age matter? Age doesn't matter. Okay. Age doesn't Say matter. Say more to that. I mean, think about this. Like Moses uh, spent 40 years in Egypt. Okay. Separated from God. It's 40 years, uh, you know, uh, son of Pharaoh's daughter. Then he spent 40 years in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Then he, at 80, he got his call mm -hmm. back. So without a doubt, I mean, you can see people like C.T. Studd and Jonathan Goforth, they were in their 70s when they went on the mission field in China and Africa. Mm. So no, age, age, listen, because discipleship is not based upon going somewhere or doing a certain thing, mm -hmm. but it's learning from Jesus Christ himself and then really ministering what you learn from God to other people, mm. training other people. So, uh, age no and that's what some people will think like well i'm over i'm uh, you know you know the retirement thing of 65 yeah, yeah. years old and they think that somehow applies to christianity yeah when without a doubt that's not true yeah. that there you can you can be you see men of god throughout christian history and missionary history that uh did some amazing things john wesley i think at 85 years old was still preaching 30 times a week mm. at 85 years old you know but that does swing both ways pastor you've also got the other side you have some guys that think well that that's for the older mature christian what about me i'm a young person i'm 18 i'm 16 i'm 15 um can it, it, am i too young to be disciple no david okay i mean 17 years old he killed goliath and and samuel discipled him Samuel was a spiritual father, yeah. you know, because that so, happens. Yeah, we can see that too. That so, uh, I mean, if you can start when you're young, that's great. Yeah, that's great. But there's no limit. Somebody could say, like, I'm 60 years old, and I really want to take some steps in the uh, area of discipleship, mm -hmm. and to go on with God is absolutely plenty of time. You can live to be 90. Mm. You could do 30 years of discipleship. 60 years old, I'm ready for the beach. 60 years wow. old, I'm ready for the lounge chair. 60 years old, I'm ready to put my feet up and watch TV for the rest of my life, you know? But no, have, it doesn't have to be that way. Have you also noticed that in the story, the age of the mighty men is never mentioned? No. We not. never get their age. That's amazing. I love that. So, in other words, to God, th those men follow David. Uh, what, did, what did Caleb say at 85? Give me this mountain. He did. I'll take that mountain has the highest giants, yep. the fiercest. That's the one I want. That's it. There's that's no it. ageism in no, discipleship. No. Remember that. No. We have a call from Louisiana, uh, Ber Bernice. Bernice? From Baton Rouge. Long Can time. we take that question? Are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, I guess uh, it, I guess it's a simple question, but it's something I just want to get confirmation on. Uh, I was talking to with my son yesterday, and he said Matthew, Luke, and John was New Testament. I, I'm not going to say it's not. I know Jesus came on the. Uh, you know, he came. Wait a minute. The Bible said he came under the law to redeem those who were under the law. So I was thinking it was, well, I don't know. I, I don't know how to say it, but anyway, I call for you to help me out. Maybe, maybe think about this, that somehow, mm -hmm. somehow people have this idea that there was uh, only grace only when Jesus came. I mean, no, the, it, uh, no mm -hmm. the, the Bible stands as one. Okay. Okay. The scripture cannot mm -hmm. be broken. All right. Right. Scripture cannot right. be broken. Mm -hmm. John chapter 10, it can't be broken. So there was mm -hmm. grace and love and mercy and the character of God in the book of Genesis, just as much as there yes, is. Enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. Later on. So it wasn't like all of a sudden God changed into grace when the mm -hmm. new Testament came, you know, that when mm -hmm. Jesus came, God's always been a God of loving kindness. His loving kindness mm -hmm. is better mm -hmm. than life. So okay. uh, it's very important that we understand the character and nature of God is there. Now, mm -hmm. there, there could be certain mm -hmm. ways, uh, certain actions that God took because of the nature of situations or people uh, at certain mm -hmm. points, you know. But God is unchanging, Hebrews 13, mm -hmm. 8 right. and 9, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. He's unchanging. Mm -hmm. He never changes. 3 and 6, okay. 3 and 6, I read that. Malachi, Malachi 3, 6, yes, and Hebrews 13, Eight and nine, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and James one seventeen. Okay, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from above, from, from the above. Father of all lights, mm -hmm. in whom there is no variableness, nor shadow mm -hmm. of turning. Beautiful. He never changes, no variableness, and he never turns away. So God has always been the same. God the same yesterday, mm -hmm. today, and forever. Mm -hmm. That is so, so true. Did that help you, Bernice? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, it does. But when you say God had always been a God of grace and, and, and mercy, does that go back to when they said, I think it was Noah found grace in the Yes, ma'am. You know your yeah. Bible, Genesis right. 6. I think you're fine, Bernice. It, it sounds like you've got it all organized in your mind a little bit. Well, what happened, Bernice, when, when Adam and Eve sinned and Jesus covered them with skins? In other words, there had to be the shedding of, a, of, of an animal, mm -hmm. the blood of a lamb, okay? So the heart of God has never changed. Yeah. It, it's from eternity. God has been a God of love, mercy, grace, and truth from eternity. No, Amen. Beautiful. So just as God has not changed, his character has not changed. So to be mighty with God in the Old Testament is to be mighty with God. In the New Testament, it is a question of character, not mm -hmm. a question of, of behavior. You're not mighty because of what you do. That's what the world says because it lives by sight. Mm -hmm. We walk in the spirit. It's by the content of my character. And, that, and Pastor Billy made a great point. Character does not come overnight. That's why character is oftentimes rare. It doesn't come overnight. It's a process, and it's a process, he pointed out, that requires discipleship. I want to go back grow, to what you said. Like, that's, that's interesting because yeah. 2 Peter 3.18, at the end of his life, he says, grow right. in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. So he's still saying, I need to grow. And character. Growth, wow. yeah. You're growing in the character and nature of God. And that will take place. Not only will I, and I think this is, this is a, a, an interesting point. Okay. It takes place my whole Christian life, but I believe we'll be always growing in heaven. Yes. I really think so. We're not, it's not like, okay, I'm in heaven. Where's my place? I'm going to go over there and sit there. Now what do we do? No, you will be growing because the, the infinite will always be ministering to the finite. Yes. It'll be God himself ministering to us. And this is so key mm -hmm. that we're, we're growing and we will be growing uh, forever. Beautiful. You can reach us on 1-800-338-7060. Or you can reach us locally at 410-483-3700. Yep. We'd love to hear from you, especially about this thought with the mighty men concerning the discipleship. Yep. But I want to ask you a different question. What are all those comments up there, by the way? Uh, I can't see them. <laughs> a lot of them are amen. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. I want to ask you this question, though. When you mentioned the, the quality of being discipled, how do I grow in being mighty according to how God describes it? Um, you, mentioned, you mentioned the church. You mentioned um, salvation. You mentioned the church. You mentioned being a disciple. You also mentioned Bible school. There is yeah. a group of people, and it's a growing group of people that are in the church of God who are not going to go to Bible school. Can they still be mighty? Oh, that's a loaded question. Isn't yes, it? sir, it is. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, somebody could go to, okay, let's put it like this. Somebody could go to Bible school but never study the Bible on their own. Agreed. And never and never get involved. So I really believe, uh, without a doubt, Bible school is vitally important to discipleship. Okay. There's going to be s situations where people uh, really will walk with God, and maybe they've never had any exposure to Bible school. I've met them yeah. in places in different countries. They've been out of churches. World. Yeah, but I I think that when we think about Bible school, sometimes we have this understanding of what we think Bible school is yeah. and just a place where you're learning of God. Yeah. It's not a pressurized situation where the learning, the exams, and if I don't pass the exam, mm -hmm. I flunk mm -hmm. and I don't, no, no, it should be a place where uh, you're, you come to God and you learn of him. He is meek and lowly and Bible school should always give you rest. Cause See, there's, rest. There's a lot of people who say, okay, pastor Ronaldo, I'm working, I'm working a full-time job. Uh, I can't get here for Bible school. Uh, or, or maybe capacity, or sometimes, sometimes they say, um, uh, they say things like, well, I'm not sure, Pastor, I can do this. And then, and then they say, but, uh, but I, can I be in the church anyway? Can I grow? Of course. I had a of course you can grow. You can grow in the church. There's no doubt about it. And by the way, how about just taking, like, don't, don't, you know, I mean, I had a family, I had two kids, and I had a full-time job. Okay. I was working like, like sometimes 10 hours a day. Maybe I took one or two courses in the beginning. I took one mm. course. Try one. Mm -hmm. Try one. Okay. You know, come on a Friday night. Try one. It won't even cost you anything. Try one. Okay. And and then see what happens. And maybe it's it, it, one a semester, two a year. Maybe it takes you twenty. I don't know what it takes. Mm -hmm. Or all of a sudden you feel I can do more than one. And mm -hmm. it should be a place where where I'm resting and I'm relaxing in God. Mm -hmm. And it's not this pressure. I see when we think school or college. We have this certain attitude because of what education has always been driving people to succeed, to get good grades, to do better, to, to 
get through it all and make yourself something and make a living. No, this is life, learning, and resting in the midst of I'm it. I'm glad you said that because there's a lot of folks who have a mentality that I can't be mighty in greater grace if I don't go to Bible school. And, no. and that's a myth, obviously. I like the part that you said when you said to me that, okay, I try it. There's a, sp a special time in the beginning of a semester in the first class yeah. where you can sit in and just kind of test drive it. Just, okay, I'm going to sit down. Right. I'm going to commit an hour. I'm going to give one hour and see if you could speak to me. Or I could right. even look online. I could take an online older class and look at it. But some way to stimulate the Bible in my life. Because, sure. frankly, going to church for an hour message once or twice a week, I'm getting in a 168-hour a week debt week. I'm only putting one or two hours in the Bible. Right. And there's going to be cases where people are very much studied people. Yeah. And they're going to study the Bible. But I, I think learning from God takes two directions. Number one, mm -hmm. my vertical with God, okay. my personal time with God. Number two, the horizontal, hmm. the, the church, mm -hmm. and then Bible school. But like, at least if you're going to a good Bible teaching church yeah. and you, you're, you can get from the pulpit three times a week the word, mm -hmm. a person can grow. Mm. A person can grow. And maybe uh, if we have a thousand people in the church, mm -hmm. okay, and we have 140 people in Bible school, mm -hmm. uh, what, what does that mean? The other 850 are not going to grow? I, don't, I would never say that. No. Mm. They, they can grow. They can grow. And uh, yet there's going to be people that are going to take the challenge because they really see the importance of learning uh -huh. and Bible school training right. for their future. Yeah. And you know, Pastor Stevens once made this statement and I, I kind of like listened to it and I was it kind of hit me hard the first time, but then I thought it through. You can only take somebody in, if you're ministering to people, you can only take them as far as you've been yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't, if you did it one year, you can't take them beyond one. Mm. No, you can't. So uh, why not? And, and don't put pressure on yourself. If, if you look at it and say, oh my, three years of Bible school? Well, maybe it takes you six. You know how long it took me? I started Bible classes in 1978, okay? okay? I think uh, I, graduated, I graduated seven years later. Wow. It took me seven years to do two and a half. Wow. Seven wow. years. No, I didn't come, I, didn't, I couldn't go full time. I had a job, I had a family. I okay. just took one or two courses. Mm -hmm. and then I took maybe one, something in the summer. Mm -hmm. So I took maybe five a year. Mm. It took me seven years. To, to finish mm. Bible school. And even then I was given a lot of practical credit. Let me give you this, this, huh? this, this, this scenario. I'm, there's a guy with one of our churches said to me, he said, okay, pray for me. I'm waiting for God to do something in my life. There's mm -hmm. this superhero mentality that happens in the church where a guy sits in the congregation and he's waiting on the power of God to move him, to, to, to draw him to do something in the work of God. And God's already done it. They what, don't even know it. What flies in the face <laughs> of discipleship. I'm not going to draw near in Hebrews 10, yeah. 22. I'm not going to go find. Yeah. What's that verse? Is it first Kings chapter five? It talks about making a space for the man of God in my life, mm -hmm. making a space for, for someone that could disciple me. And oftentimes we don't make the space. So that's your question. If I'm not being discipled, the first argument is there's nobody in the church to disciple me. But am I complicit in that? Am I, am I, am I part yeah. of the problem in that? Well, there, there are some churches where there is no one to disciple them. Okay. It, it, it doesn't happen. It's a, a pastor of a church who doesn't have many assistants, okay. and they, they're not really strong in the word. Uh, but then again, there's a place where it can, it's there, it's available, but I don't necessarily want it, or I want it on my own terms. Okay. I might want it on my own terms. But I've got to have a hunger. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, my wife made macaroni and meatballs yesterday. Oh. Okay, I could smell it the whole day when I was around. Mm -hmm. you know, it's in the kitchen. <laughs> well, it developed a desire in me to couldn't wait for four o'clock <laughs> when four o'clock came, and I I overdid it. Oh no! Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think you I went in. Oh. Meat, uh, meatballs coming out of my ears. Oh, we're you know? gonna need prayer here. <laughs> but, but you know what? It's like do do I have a desire okay. for it? And here's another thing: what about even people that go to Bible school for two, three, or four years? Then they stop learning the Bible. Mm. See, there's another danger. Okay. All of a sudden, they do not have a desire to open the book. Mm -hmm. Been there, done that. Yeah. Yeah, been the Bible school, done that, you know. No, but it's like the implementation, the practical application of the word, and continue to study. I study the Bible much more now than I ever did when I went to Bible school, mm. you know. And, I, and that, you can say, oh, yeah, you're a pastor. That's easy for you to say. Well, I'm saying, look at, be practical and ask God to give you a personal schedule. Mm -hmm. Like, God. 
I started like this. Give me 15 minutes a day in the Bible. Okay. This was like in the 70s. All right. Okay. Then I, after about a year, can you get, can you give me 30, can you give me grace for 30 minutes? Mm. And just developing and working way up. Don't get upset at yourself because you can only do five or 10. Wow. Be thankful that you can do five or 10 minutes of reading the Bible and then ask God to develop a capacity for you to grow. That's it's simple. That goes back to what you said. The growing in the character, the grow, the becoming the mighty man in character is a process of patience and a work of grace. And and my commitment, my participation is by faith, but it's going to take some time. Uh, let's take a comment from a writer. Hi, Aretta. How are you? Yeah, good morning, Pastor Ronaldo and Pastor Shabelli. Yes, Hello. Okay. Yeah, and you see, let me tell you something now. With this Sister Carter, Aretta Carter, uh-huh. I, esteem, I esteem God's words more than my necessary food. Okay. You did in the office with Pastor Chabelli and you mentoring us. I'm here with my Bible open on my by and my my bed and I search my scriptures daily. Mm-hmm. When I when I was young I go to the scriptures, I had Bible class in our mm-hmm. church. Mm-hmm. Before I moved here to um, Baltimore in two thousand ten, I was a scripture reader in my local church home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to sing in the choir, take part in every area of the church. And I believe in, my mind is on God's word daily. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And over the years, I develop, I be, like I become a prayer warrior. Pastor Sir Orlando and Pastor Sibeli, I pray for you all already for the morning. Amen. Thank you. Your name. Yes, oh, yes. God bless I, you. I believe in interceding for people. Mm-hmm. And the unsaved, uh-huh. this young generation, and the world in general. That's awesome, all right. Amen. That that's actually the road to being mighty. I mean, most of us, you could think about us, and you could think about life like I'm in a cave and I'm just kind of there existing. But then God comes in, He brings the man of God in my life, He brings the Word of God in my life, and then God leads me out. Then He leads me into a life with Him. You know? Amen. And by the grace of God, Aretta, I declare you mighty woman of God. There you are, Aretta. Well, you picked the word up in my mouth. I was going to tell you the same thing, Pastor Sibeli. I'm uh, a mighty woman of God. There you go. I, Pastor Sibeli, <laughs> when I come to a greater grace and I hear you preach, or even on my phone, I listen to everything you said. I'm going to the scriptures with you now. Amen. I'm searching the scriptures with you. Amen. I'm Pastor Hallelujah. Ronaldo. That's how I do. We're mighty together. I like that. You know what? We're mighty together. We're growing together. And we're going forward together. Amen. God bless you, dear. God bless you, too. Love you. Love you. Take care now. Is there another call? We have a prayer request for Jim Murkowski. Hey, Jim. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. Awesome, awesome show. Um, I'm calling about a friend of mine who recently confided in me that he's been watching pornography from the age of 10, and he's in his 48th year. Wow. He had a nervous breakdown for two days this last week, and um, I really i am asking people to have mercy on him and pray for this unknown person. Yeah. Is he born again? He goes to this church. Okay. Okay, if he's born again... It will not be just prayer that we will pray, and that's important. But not prayer cannot deliver you from evil, okay? Prayer is part of it, but the only way, as Dr. Stevens was saying, as the Bible says, uh, that to be delivered from evil is to have God's thoughts Mm -hmm. on that area. Here's an area uh, that he's being, now maybe it could be pornography, it could be anger, it could be prejudice, it could be uh, envy, jealousy, it could be slothfulness. you got to go to the scriptures. He needs help in the scriptures to take that area and to take verses that will really defeat that area and meditate upon them and think on them, rehearse them and go to them. It doesn't just happen by prayer. You know, somebody can pray about that, but I pray he would go to the scriptures yeah. because the word of God is what brings deliverance. There's no doubt about that. So that's a great prayer. That's what you su- you should suggest to him. He needs a great diet of the Word of God in that area. Okay, he's got to go to that. He's got to go to the Bible in that particular area where he's going to read verses that will really take control of his mind. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. 
2 Corinthians 10, 4, casting down vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Got to go to the Bible and then rehearse the Bible and speak the Bible out verbally. And when the projections come and the reflections come, the word of God is what brings victory. Um, yeah, Jim, that's a great, that's a great counsel. Maybe you can not, not just pray for him, but you can pray with him. And as you pray with him, maybe you can go over those scriptures together. Um, that might help him a little bit. And also here at the church, um, in the inReach department, there's men of God that can work with him and help him in that area. Super. Thanks so much. All right. God bless you. Pastor Billy, as we close mm-hmm. the program, think about this for a second. We're talking about the building of the mighty men of God, but what would you say just be the, some of the enemies of being a mighty man of God or mighty woman of God? Pornography is obviously one of them, but what are some other well, enemies? Sin, sin is an enemy, right? Obviously, sin okay. is an enemy. Um, the world is an enemy. The old sin nature is an enemy. Mm-hmm. The devil and demons are the enemies mm-hmm. of becoming and developing as a man of God or a woman of God. Mm-hmm. And so if I give place to those things, mm-hmm. then I am not giving place to that which can make me a mighty man or a mighty woman of God, mm-hmm. which is God's word, God's spirit, the body of Christ, the gospel message, uh, you know, all these things can really develop me and help me to grow as a Christian. God's mercy, God's love, God's grace, you know, God's faithfulness, God's loyalty, all these things. I need to be a receiver. The Bible says, receive with meekness mm-hmm. the implanted and grafted word, which can deliver your soul. Mm-hmm. So if my soul is being delivered by God's word and by God's life and by God's uh, love and mercy and grace, then I will not give a place to these other things. And I need to learn to put on the whole armor of God. Yes. There's another interesting point. If you go to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17, you see the seven aspects of God's armor. Mm-hmm. And it, can, it says, take, yeah. take, yeah. take, take, mm-hmm. take, and then put on. You take by grace, put on by faith. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you stand naked against the enemy. Yeah. You stand with nothing. We need the armor of of God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to resist evil, to resist the powers, principalities, all these devices that are uh, at work by the enemy. So being a receiver, this is the key. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we began the Christian life by receiving the person of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But some people all of a sudden leave it there and they stop receiving with meekness the word, receiving uh, from portions in the body of Christ, receiving his love, receiving his mercy, receiving his grace, receiving his faith. There's the music. So <laughs> we are mighty through the development of God in our life through the spirit as we walk in faith as a work of grace. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of Grace Monday. Hour. Monday. We'll see you Monday. Tuesday. Oh, no, it's Monday. Actually, hol- Monday's a holiday, but we'll be on. I think there'll be a tape program. You'll see us Monday by tape and live on Tuesday. God bless you until next week. On Tuesday.